Will Clayton Church of Christ. This is Sunday uh, evening worship. This is the message for January 17, 2000, 2021. It is part two, and it is a continuation of an actual Bible study that we had this past Wednesday. And it is entitled, Paul Used the Same Doctrine He Wrote. Uh, to teach us to teach others also. But what we actually want to do is we want to talk about the gospel that Paul used to teach others. So a little bit different than the message that we heard those Sundays ago, a couple of Sundays, because we talked about his conversion tremendously. But now we want to talk about the actual message that he taught. The gospel that Paul used to teach others. We want to actually talk about that message. And we use the book of Acts chapter number 26 verse 1 through 20 where he talks about the type of man he was how he came to the knowledge of Christ and what was given to him we spoke about that on Wednesday and now what we want to talk about is how did he get this message conveyed over to the Jews, which is the first group, one of the first groups he dealt with. And so we went to Acts chapter 13. We studied some of that on Wednesday. And so this lesson being a spinoff from a message, we turn into a whole other topic on Wednesday. And now we have a part two to that one because it's important for people to understand you, you can't come up with some type of a thing you think to try and rescue a soul all you do is damage yourself so Paul is in Acts chapter 13 preaching to the Jewish nation and he's preaching hard to them and we're going to pick up where we left off Acts 13 beginning at verse 36 from Wednesday night so, here we are, picking up now with the gospel that Paul used to teach others. The gospel that Paul used to teach others. Here's the message. Here's what we're going to deal with. Acts 13 and verse 36. For David, he began to say, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on the sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. So we left off from where we said Jesus saw corruption, then his body was given life not to see corruption again, meaning his body did not decay again. Lazarus, Martha and Mary's brother, saw corruption, was given life only to return unto corruption again. Jesus, however, is different. Because he dies and never to return to corruption again after his body had decayed and been given life again. So David falls in the category of Lazarus. David dies but isn't resurrected as Lazarus was. Is corrupted, decayed, and is still decayed. Peter talks about it in Acts chapter 2 and now Paul talks about it now. And so therefore he says David saw corruption verse 37 but he whom God raised again saw no corruption. That would be Christ. Verse 38 be it known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. Now this is the thing we have to understand we see these specific words through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. Through the word by, those are synonymous. By this man, Jesus, not you, not your preacher, not me, not your pastor, not your mama, not your daddy, not your husband or wife or children. By Jesus Christ or through him, by his power, is a message preached. You don't have the power to preach a message like this. With the fierce anger 
that people show you when you talk in this mess? You don't have that power. See, when you talk in this mess and you're not saved, all you're doing is talking. You just talk. The demons not scared of you. The people not scared of you. They're really not. Even if they obey, they ought to do it because they agree with your thought, but they're not fearful. They're not afraid of you like they were afraid of Moses, how his face shone. They're not. That's why the demon jumps on the seven men and whoop them and run them out naked. He's not scared. He know. He said, Paul, we know. Acts 19. Jesus, we know. Who are you? I said, who are you supposed to be? And see, the thought is, is that we have to stop in our mind and ask ourselves, say, now wait a minute, you know. So the demons can tell. They knew who Christ was. That was nothing to show outwardly. He told people, don't tell people who I am. And if they didn't, they, they didn't know who he was. Demons can see. The demons can look at you and see if you got that seal in you too. Oh yeah, they know. I don't mean they're too scared to come and get you. But when you exercise their power, they got to go. The problem is you don't have no power. That's why you can't change. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, you haven't changed or anything. Let me give you some examples of what we think is change. People think because they used to use drugs and they don't know more, they think they're saved. Do you know drug use is only one of a multiple list of sins? It's just one of many. It's a fairly obvious sin because it always ruins your health and your persona to people. Sometimes you find yourself naked in closets. You don't know how you got there. It's, it's kind of like, a, how can you be so ignorant to do this knowing it's ruining your life type sin? But when you stop that, it doesn't mean anything. Because you can't erase what you did. See, Christ preaches the forgiveness of sins through us because he can erase your past. Tibetan priests, you might can go in the mountains and talk to them and maybe you can get off drugs. But they can't erase your past. See, the problem with a sin is it sticks to you better than a stain, better than glue. When you go to the judgment, it's all over you. And the Lord can see you still got your sins with you. It isn't that you believe your sins removed. It's that you do what Christ says that removes sin. Going in water doesn't do it. If the teacher isn't from God and the message isn't from God, the water is just neutral as anything else. And so therefore he says clearly here, through Christ, forgiveness of sins is preached to you. Verse 39, and by him, all that believe are justified from all things. From which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So now we learn something. He's telling the Jews, you can't be justified from these things that Christ removed by the law of Moses. Because Moses said, wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him. So they really, they really mad now. That's what we talk about when they, they mad at him. Verse 40, beware therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. What was spoken of in the prophets? Look at Isaiah 29 and 14. See, you know, people, people, you know why it's hard to let go of sin? It's just like a man letting go of a pork chop. I'm hungry. I like it. That's bringing me joy. Why should I let this go for something you got that's going to actually bring me pain? Because it caused me to let go of what brings me joy. Isaiah 29, 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall perish be hid. Now, uh, you know, a person has to stop now and look at this and say, well, my goodness, what is this going to be? Now, let's go back to the book of Acts chapter 13. And then he says, verse 41, Behold, you despise us and wonder. And parents, he say, you despise They talk to the Jews, wonder. See, you're that group, he says. For I work at work in your days, at work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declared unto you. Now when you look at verse 41, now you understand why when you preach, a person hates it. It looks sad, he doesn't believe it. 
but you telling him. And then you showing him in the Bible, but the key word is, I'm a despiser. See, this information causes me to be what I don't want to be. It causes me to not exercise what I like to do. And I'm not hurting nobody, you think, but spiritually you're killing someone. You're killing somebody. Yeah, and that's why you got, that's why he says you got their blood on your hand. You're a murderer. You killed their spirit. And the Lord said, when you come before me, you're going to be just like the rich man. But I, but I, no, 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 no. See, because he don't want to go to heaven even while he's in hell. He just don't want to be in hell because if you put him in heaven, he's already telling Abraham, you don't know what you're talking about from Luke 6. He, he's telling Abraham, you don't know what you're talking about. Sin Lazarus, I'm telling you, if you sin Lazarus, they're here. But you're going to tell Abraham and you're in hell and he's made it to paradise. How would you possibly know what's going to rescue us all? That's the same thing down here. You're in a denominational church, your soul is lost, but you're going to tell the saints how to teach the gospel. So that's an impossibility. And see, so the mentality in hell is they still think they know what they're talking about. As seen in Luke 16. He's telling Abraham, Nay, Father Abraham, you don't know what you're talking about. If you say Lazarus, tell them I'm down there, they'll believe. He said, No, they have Moses and a prophet. What does it mean by that? We got it written. Everybody know Moses is not alive at the time Jesus is talking. Everybody understand that. It's clear that guy dies. During the days of Moses and the prophets. Preaching being written. Not during the days of Moses and the prophets. Being alive. It is written because he says prophets with an S. Well what is he saying? He's saying there are many prophets. John is a prophet. There are prophets. There were prophets in the New Testament. So all we know is at the time of this story. That it's given. When this story is released. He says Moses and the prophet. He didn't say the New Testament. So the New Testament hasn't been written. So this is an Old Testament individual. Who has read but not believed. And that's what you did and what today. People that read and don't believe. They're saying God not going to do that. He don't care about the earth. He just letting people do their thing and watching them like an overseer. And then he's going to judge. No that's not God. It's all in your life. Setting it up for destruction or setting it up for salvation. But his hand is all over you. You just don't know. We have to understand that. It's, it's, a, it's, like, it's like an individual. You know what it's like? It's like an individual coming to your job that you're supposed to train about your job. But he tells you up front, I've never done this type of work. I don't even know what you guys Possess as material. I've never been in a building like this. And the minute you start showing something, he starts telling you how it go. That's what it's like to be in a denominational church and teach us the gospel. It's like we'd have to be crazy to believe you. Because you're not in the kingdom. And this is why there's love giving while we're teaching. Because we know you don't know what you're talking about. So we put up with disrespect, negative comments, backbites, talking about your life not no uh, life fell out of heaven, disrespect. But you just be patient and you keep teaching of the same gospel that Paul used to teach others. This is what he's doing. And one of the things he says is, if a man tell you, you're not going to believe it. So now you see why. And you look at your friends. You're in the denomination church. And they hear the gospel. They don't want to get baptized. You look to the left or right. But he's saying. Oh we're going to tell you. But you're just not going to listen. So he tells Israel that first. In advance. And now Paul's saying. Watch it now. You know what he already said about you guys. That you're not going to hear. Although a man tells you. So that's the Throw some red flags and start going, wait a minute, hold on. Be like the Bereans. Okay, let me get my Bible. Let me get the Old Testament. Now go ahead, Paul, talk. Because he has to knit the new into the Old Testament. In a sense, to connect where it stops. But he cannot put the new 
gospel message inside you, the old wine bottle, because you're burst. That's why you got to get baptized. See, the message is intertwined where it stops and it leaves it vague. The New Testament intertwines, connects, and then it takes you to the new. Where you say, oh, that's what that meant in the Old Testament. But he can't put that new message in you, the testament in Christ's blood, which is his spirit. The Holy Ghost can't give it to you. It will explode in you and destroy you. Because just like new wine... When it goes into an old wine skin, it expands. So the new soft animal skin material starts to widen. But when it's old and crusty and hard from the old wine, I already swelled it up. It starts to poop. So all my wine needs that. Yeah, it's gone. Medicine gone. A party drink, whatever you have, it's on the dirt now. And so he says uh, in verse 42 And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought. That these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So the Jews left, but the Gentiles said, Well, hey man, you gonna come back? Are you gonna come back again? Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So notice, many of the Jews and the religious proselytes. See, that's what he means by Gentiles. These are religious proselytes. They have come to Judaism and so therefore the Jews who are born into Judaism and taught, they start saying, well Paul look, talk to us some more about this, you know. Verse 44, and the next Sabbath they came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Now the whole city comes. And here comes trouble. But when Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy. They said, why are they going over there to say, God, listen to that crazy man, Paul, talking about that way. Okay. They're envious. And spake against those things that were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. How are they blaspheming? The same way the Muslim community says, Jesus is not the Son of God, that's blasphemy. The same way the Jews say, oh no, 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 no. You have to go to Bet Sharon and the other temples. That's blasphemy. Oh, oh no, no, no. You know the sad thing about the Jews? They don't even cut up animals no more. Isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is tell a Jew, dude, you don't even do the law. Mm -hmm. How can you know? You don't, you're not even on the law most. You don't cut no animal. And I know why you can't because you already know the temple is destroyed. So you don't know where the priests are at. You don't know where their ancestors are at. Descendants. Another thing, you don't have no temple. It's been towed up. You have to fight somebody to do it again. So they made up a religious worship. The Jews will tell you some of them, we sing our, we sing our songs, that's our sacrifice. You see that? Now they stole that from us, you know that, right? That's the Christian movement. I don't go to the Jew. You have to be a Christian to do that. If you're not a Christian, you got to bring around. You better get you a lamb. You better go build that temple. You better get you some, you better fire, make up some fake priests like Jeroboam because you don't even look like that generation. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you know, you know how many people don't know that? So, you know, what you want to do is ask the denomination, those that claim they're in Christ, ask them, say, why don't Jews use animals anymore? You know, and just ask, say, if you think, because the denomination world thinks that Jews are still people, God said, why don't they use animals anymore? Watch him hurt himself. You have to hold your breath, it's so comical. His, if he had the gall to try and lie Amen. somebody say well I don't think you should boast about the knowledge you have over nothing let me tell you something to teach truth is not boasting if that's the case Jesus was the most braggadocious man on the earth the problem is you don't know the answer either and that's why you saying it see that's the problem you don't know the answer and you're mad that only a set of people have it and Daniel already said it's not going to be left to nobody else you have to be in that group it's not a clique group either, but it's a secret priesthood. And you know the secret? You can't even get in even if we baptize you unless you let the Lord open your heart. That's the secret. When you look at the word priesthood, it's a secret society. It's just a word the Greeks and everybody use. It's a secret priesthood for their ritual idolatry worship. We take the same priesthood word and say, okay, that's what I was like. I think we worship God. And you can't even get in if we baptize you right now if you don't believe. The Holy Ghost has said, man, I'm not touching you. 
We could dip you seven times like name and you still not getting in. It's a secret society. And to stay in, if you violate the rules, the law comes in, opens the door and say, get out. Can you leave now? He don't have to tell you audibly. The saints will withdraw from you. And if they don't, the word will withdraw from you. You will lose it. And we see it all the time. That's the door lockers. That's what you're looking at. Don't expect to see them in heaven. Now, if we get there, don't look for them. It won't be there. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Why? First in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So he said, God going to keep his word. I'm bringing it to the Jews first. But seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves on word. See, when you reject the gospel, you just judge yourself on word. Now, you don't get no kudos, brownie parts with God. I just don't, I don't want to get baptized right now because, you know, I'm not ready to dedicate my life to the Lord. And I don't want to play with Jesus. You playing with him now. Because at any time, what you understand, there's no connection with you in Christ. Concerning the gospel, why he feel like, yeah, that's my boy, that's my girl right there, yeah, yeah, that's my ace right there, I'm going to look out, thank God, the Lord will snatch, let me tell you something, the Lord will snatch your breath so fast, that will not even be a whimper, a flinch of sorrow for you, because he says, he that does not gather with me, scatters, so he says, you're my enemy, you scattering people from me, what did the Lord tell the fishermen, his, his children in the gospel, the great fisherman that did it for a living. He says, you got some meat children. Bring yours over here. I got some other cold. He didn't say I'm going to bring mine. He said some message now. Bring what you got over here to me. And I'll put it on the fire. See, I got a fire over here. My word. Bring your fish to me. Because this is my fire. I don't need your words. I got it over here. Let's see if it can get cooked over here. See, this nonsense about many churches, church will do. Let me tell you something. You'd have a better chance of telling a rocket scientist that if he just jump, he can go to the moon. You'd have a better chance convincing us that he can do that than to tell us this gospel is not accurate and knowing you're not in it, you're wasting time. Now, some of us you can get because we're that gullible. But there's a group of us that Man, let me tell you something. We're not worried about no judgment because we waiting on that day because we have prepared ourselves. I'm confident Anthony Carr prepared ourselves, but I don't know nobody's private life and you won't know mine. But I'm confident what I saw of him. He was ready to walk to the throne of grace boldly. I hope you'll be too. I hope I'll be. But that why did Paul say don't speak as in past tense happened? He says, judge nothing before the time. Because a man or a woman always has a private life. And so Paul said, judge nothing before the time. He said, I judge not myself. So what does he say when he say, henceforth the crown is laid for me? The Holy Ghost tells him, you're going to write your crown right. Right. Your crown right. Right. Because that becomes the word of God. That's his testimony. We have confidence the Holy Ghost let him write it. But my name, not Paul, and nor is yours. We hope a crown is laid up. We hope is one laid up for Brother Anthony. Your hope is one laid up for the people you love. But Paul says, "Don't speak in past tense, as you as you as you have judged it that you saying that because you can't." So that's why you see people say, "I know he's up in heaven right now, uh, Uncle Ned, teaching the saints." Of God and the other angels, how to how to throw the, shoot a three pointer, all kind of nonsense like that. See, that's what Paul. That's what Paul talking about. Don't do that, cause you don't know nothing, and nor do I. And this this is just it's plain. Paul said, "I'm rude in speech, blunt, just frank." That's it. That's why I say, because then you know you don't have to worry about it. 
When you lay down your head on pillow, you ought to be able to go, well, if I don't wake up, I'm good. You should be going, oh, Jesus, don't let me die tonight. Let not death come and breathe upon me. No, see, you need, to, you need to get up out the bed, get your Bible, and do like the men around Jonah, and make some commitments to God, and get it fixed. Get it fixed. If it's baptism, get baptized. If it's change, then change. And so he says here that uh, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from yourself and judge yourselves in the word of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. He says, that's it. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. Now listen at that. Did you see? Now you know what Isaiah 42 and 6 is talking about. When it says, For lo, said the Lord, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. So we take the message of Jesus, who is the light to the Gentiles. We are set to be that light. If the Lord is in you, you're the light. And you turn and you shine on Christ. And say, now he's the Savior. He's the Savior. That's what we do. We light the way to Jesus. That's what, you know what? That's what you are. You're a light bulb. And you light the way to Jesus. Don't point to the wrong direction and send them to hell. Because the law will send you there too. For so hath the Lord commanded us saying. That's what he did. Verse 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad. And glorify the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believe. So this group said, okay, man, well, this is good news, Paul. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews, but the Jews, but the Jews, stirred up the devout and honorable women. See, that were devout and honorable women. Women of honor that had a reputation when they said something, people listened. He says, and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. So they took devout and honorable women and turned their heart around because they were believers of Judaism. Or they were either people who were of the city that had power and said, man, y'all, you know, y'all's town of the city, look, you know, we don't have no issue. Y'all not robbing nothing or stealing. But, you know, y'all got to get up out of here. Just turn the city upside down. One group said, when they came, they said, these that have turned the world upside down have come to our coast too. Telling us things that are unlawful for Romans to do. See, you don't understand sometimes, and neither did I until I got the information given to me, is that there's no nation that don't have some system of worship, either it's of self, it don't have to be of God, I worship the God within, me, myself, and I. You know, I see a lot of people teach that. You know, when they say, you say, uh, you know, I'm talking about the spirit in you, yes, the God within, you say, now hold on, what you, you have to hold on, what you mean by that, God within you? You talking about Jehovah? What you talking about? Because you got to watch people. They just try to knit in what you're saying. No, no, no. That's a bunch of nonsense. And be specific. Ask questions. As Brother Fritz was teaching a lesson on the radio today. Ask for the Bible. Ask. What, 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 so, now tell me about this God in you. You hear that? And just let him talk. See, one of the things you and I don't understand is I was driving last night. There's a lot of wood burning because it's cold. And that wood smell starts getting in the air. And I thought something was wrong with my car. I said, man, that's a new car. This thing about to catch on fire. And so I said, oh, wait a minute. No, it's cold. It's the wood. I, saw, I smell. I said, okay, all right. And, and, and you know, you got to start letting your windows out, putting on the air, spray stuff. Because it start oozing through your air vents that you shut it off and just make the air circulate inside. Your car smell like you barbecuing or some wood. You know, like, my goodness, man. And that's how doctrine is. It permeates through your heart. And you got close friends and people you love. They get to talk about well, all I know is, all I know is, is that Jesus is about love. Didn't the Bible say God is love? And therefore, you know what? They start talking some nonsense. For you know, you start stinking like them. Mm -hmm. And you haven't got a piece of wood on you nowhere. 
But they are the one with the fire burn. You got to know. You got to know. Look, I like you. You a good friend. You nice. But I'm not fixing around with this nonsense you talking about. And sometimes you need to say it just like that. The Bible says evil communications corrupt or decay or eat or destroy your good morals. What you already know. Just somebody telling you something. Just telling you something. Man, there's nothing wrong with having a wife and a little honey on the side. Matter of fact, it's helped my marriage develop. You lost your mind. Your tongue ought to fall out your mouth right there for that lie you just told. No trash like that can develop no marriage. That's ridiculous. And see, this is how people say, for you know it. You shoot a pool, you take it to a pool hall, a uh, fancy with gold and so on, and here come half dressed women all out there bringing you drink. Before you know it, they got a bedroom, and you see, you going home looking like a fool now. And all of a sudden, your wife's that kind of way, no, where you been? And then, and then somebody call, you know, your nephew watch you. Oh, uh, who is this witch of indoor calling my house asking about my man watch? See, now you're in trouble. And then you want to pray. You want to go to church now. And she said, look, man, it's done. I'm sorry. And it's over. See, now, now you're a story told. You're a story told. Yeah, remember, brother so-and-so, man, that woman cut into dudes like a, like a disease. Your story now. That's why in the end it's good for you. It's good it happened. Because we already told you don't do that. And you did this. So now, now maybe you won't go to hell. Now maybe you won't go to hell. Maybe you can get it right, readjust, and put your life back together. No, I'm nobody going to say it's sad. It's not sad. You deserve it because you're a sinner and you blaspheme the doctrine which the Holy Ghost brought. And you deserve to suffer. You deserve to eat a big bowl of ice cream at 3 a.m. watching Star Trek by yourself. That's what you deserve. And I mean with all my heart. Because that's what you asked for. The Lord give you what you ask for. That's what it is. Don't feel no sorrow for you. And when people beg you, hey man, don't do this, don't do this. That guy's no good. That girl not your partner. Why don't don't hang out with them? You know, and you didn't listen. Yeah, you reap what you sow. Why would we get mad if you planted cabbage and eating cabbage? Why would we get mad? Why would we think something else would come up but you planted cabbage? So why would we sorrow? Why would we go? He's a man. Ain't no, why would you think he told a guy? He said, man, ain't nothing but cabbage all in this garden. I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, what you plant? Cabbage? He said, man, let me get in my car. But he lost his mind. See, brother, see, it's, it's simple when you make it food. But it's different when you make it sin. Nah, they know what they was doing. They just thought somewhere I can do some three-card money on God. You know, kind of. Juke him, make a juke move like a basketball player for you know, break God ankle. He can't catch me. I scored. I made it on in. No, nah, no. Nah. You can't break God ankle. No, nah. you can't do no juke move on him. He will slam dunk you into hell. And I mean with all my heart. See, this is the God that a Joel Osteen and a T.D. Jakes cannot teach about. One, they're not his. Two, they'll lose their audience. Let me tell you something. A potter's house would have nothing but mice running through it if, if he preached this to the group he got. Oh, I'm not going to say nobody going to get baptized. I'm not going to say that. But first, he'd have to become a saint. Because I've seen brothers preach and turn the whole congregation, a great portion of them into believers, and they continue to lead that group. But it won't be the number that was there before. Because it is what it is. The Lord say, few that find it. So you know what a blaspheme is to the doctrine in this text is you speak against what God say. Oh, we don't tithe anymore like the Jews did because there's no priest to give to. There's no priest system. We just give as we prosper. What? No tithing? See, you're blaspheming now. Once we teach you and show you, you have to let it go. You have to let it go. And uh, now you injure the Holy Ghost and his message. Of which that's what Jesus means. There's no forgiveness. How, you, do you think you're going to go to heaven? If you still talk about you got to give. If you don't give a tithe, you're going to hell. And you're going to make that. Now that message injures the Holy Ghost. So you're going to be in heaven. You'll be injuring the Holy Ghost still. You'll be like coming up to him. Gut punching. Elbowing him on the head. You know. And walking off all in heaven. Whooping the Holy Ghost around. You think the Lord is crazy? 
it, it, I sometimes I just look at people sometimes and just say, look at them and say, I, I, I love you. Keep studying. Look at it again. Because you it, that one is done. You better get away before he bites you. They'll bite you. And have you not knowing the truth anymore. Nevertheless, he says here, they stirred them up, told Paul them, take his stuff and get, verse 51, but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto our corner. See, so Paul said, all I know to do with y'all, that's shake the dust. That means we done with y'all. And you leave. No hope for y'all. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I thought they already had the Holy Ghost. They did. So what does this mean? You have to understand when you see the word Holy Ghost. It can be either the being himself. Or what he brings. Gifts and power. That's your job to know the context. They're not getting the Holy Ghost anymore. They're being filled with his power. I know power is not there. Because it's not supposed to be there. You have to understand that from Acts chapter 1. When the Lord said you will receive power from on high. And that's when the Holy Ghost came and sat upon the twelve. And they preached. They got power from on high. And now the disciples are getting rejuvenated with power. If you didn't know that, that's a red flag. Maybe you're not a member of the church. Or you already knew you weren't a member of the church. Or you're not obedient enough to have studied or you don't go to church enough. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. And we want to make those adjustments. So now we understand that Paul taught the idolaters with the New Testament, which they never had. Look at Acts 17 and verse 16. Remember what we're talking about. The gospel that Paul used to teach others. This is it. Acts 17 and 16. You know, one of the joys I experienced being in the church of Christ was that even when my wife told me stuff that made me mad, I would go home and I would look at the track and I'd be like, man, this is, get my box, this is actually in the Bible, my goodness. And I said, what type of people is this? How can they, they hit no matter what answer I give them, they hit. They hit. No matter what pitch I throw. Pop. I just watch God the pop. Pop. Home again. I don't admit they don't strike out. And I know I said, now nah, I used to run rings around other people. But now nah, I'm talking about something with people that know the answer. See, that's what's wrong. And that's when I began to tell myself, you scared to get baptized because you know it's going to change you. I knew why I was scared. I can't be what I am now. I can't. That's what I said to myself. I, said, I can't be this no more. I just, man, it's going to. And, and I asked myself, what, what, what will I do now? Can you believe I was like, what will I do now? How about live righteous? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I said, I can't go to clubs and stuff, man. I'm not going to be able to cuss. You know, I said, if I cuss, I'm going to get in trouble. Man, who am I going to? Won't be able to look at nakedness? Man, what will I do? I'm saying, I said, well, and I said, that's how bad off it was. That's, that's beautiful. You have to admit it, though. Acts 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. So, see, the city is taught from the fall. The Jews, which used to be the righteous, are not lost to because they have not become Christian. So, remember the three groups from 1 Corinthians 10. Jews, Gentiles, and the church of God. Jews, Gentiles, and the church of God. And here's where you see it in its imagery. You got the city torn from the floor with idols. Jews don't worship idols, but their worship has now become blasphemy to God because God has said, I destroyed your house. Only the Christians, which is a mixture of Jews, proselytes, and Gentiles, are right. See, that, see, this is the image of it. And so he says, in the marketplace daily, he went with the devout person in the marketplace daily with them Whomever. So you could have met a gangster, what they call in the Bible, Bezos sort, a hoodwink, coming up there, he just robbed some stuff, he got some cash. Say, man, give me that meat over there. You know, Paul, hey, how's it going, friend? You know, have you heard about the way Jesus Christ? Paul would talk to anybody. Look how many muscles you got, how nasty you look, all your woman. They'd come up and talk to you about the Bible. Whoever, and you, listen, when you go to Kroger's, you, it's everything in Kroger's. 
You know, people will kill people and go and crawl because they will. And, and one group killed a young woman and went and bought some lattes and sat and drank them. Drinking lattes, you know, why is this good? And then the police caught up to them. Just kill somebody. And all the like, yeah, chocolate lattes, just kill somebody. See, God, that was just another body to us. So Paul would have ran into you while you are in your latte. Have you heard about the weight? Talk to you about this. Pull over here. If you listen, and that's what we do. We don't know who we're talking to. And so what happens is, verse 18, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics and kind of, now I'm going to tell you about these two groups. You can pull them up. Epicureans and Stoics. Much of what you do in America and other countries are from the Epicureans and the Stoics. Their doctrine is a philosophy of working together and building, creating, looking into the spirit. That's what your psychiatrists and psychologists are doing. They're of Stoics and Epicureans. It's so deep and so far back, the new guys pick it up and write books and make money from it. That's where you get it from. Now, this is the OGs, the originals. Mm. And I'm going to show you, I love God. This is the same doctrine you give a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Say, so come let me talk to you, you Epicurean, you Stoic. Sit down. That's how I was see. Mm. Because that's what it is. Hermes, Hermogenes, Sophocles, you know, so, man, please. This is the originals. And Paul is saying, same thing I wrote you is the same thing you, because I gave it to their fathers. This is the fathers. Look at the word. I'm encouraging you to. And some said, now look what they call him. What will this babbler say? That the babbler, this word means he repeats what he's heard. Not that Paul isn't repeating what Christ has said, but they're accusing him of repeating what a man said. That's not what Paul does. Paul said, I got mine from Jesus himself. So you're not repeating what Paul said. You're repeating what Jesus gave Paul. Remember that. That's how you know it's 100% legit. Until you run into Paul's sins, Peter's sins, then you don't do that. So he says here, clearly, they call him a babbler. Other some, he seemed to be a set of forth of strange gods. Now they're worshiping fake phony gods. You know why they said gods? Because he talked about three. This is a good one for the Pentecostal. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Why do you get that? S. Because he let them know, yeah, it's three and they're all deity. See, if you didn't know that, then I encourage you to come to church more. Because when you see in the Old Testament, our God is one. That word is plural. That G-O-D is plural. Because it's a Godhead. Father, Son, Holy God. Now you know. Now you can either fight it or let it help save him. Because the Pentecostals are not Christians. And they're not going to teach us the gospel. Right. See, that's the difference. Pentecost is a day and not a religion. I'm going to say that one again. Pentecost is a day and not a religion. Is not that group already confused? You don't know what to call yourself. And you're going to teach the gospel to the world? You can't. You can't. Holiness is a possession of given, uh, given to you by God. That's not a church. Another group, thoroughly confused. See, this is the problem. And this is what you and I have to fight. No more greater than what he's got to fight. Denominationals already existed in the mind of men. It's all about the church. That's what this lesson series is about. It is about. That's why we're talking about something new each time. Because we're showing you, you're not fighting nothing that they didn't already fight in the first century. All you got to do is use what they said. Don't come up with nothing cute. Don't wash no cars. Don't give no backpacks. Don't have no balloon party to, to bring souls to Christ. If you want to invite people to the church to eat dinner, that's fine. But don't think you're going to gain them with a hot dog and hamburger. Nah. Because the Lord will say, I don't even want that soul. That one's yours. 
You can't do that. That's what they do because that's all they got is hot dog and hamburger information. But we have the meat of the Most High God, the Word of God. That's what I said. This isn't boasting. This is fact. If I tell you my name, my name is Stephen Olsen. My name is Stephen Olsen. I didn't pray. I just emphasize what it is. That's my name. You know when the line says Billy? I got to tell you what it is. It's the truth. We'll wrap up here. He says, Strange God, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. See, the resurrection involves who resurrects Christ. One scripture says the Holy Ghost. Other scriptures say God. And then Jesus said, I'm going to lift myself up. But we got three gods. Now, hold on. Yeah, that's right. But they're strange to us. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this doctrine is whereof thou speakest. And what in the world is this? Let me tell you how powerful. Okay, he already whooped two groups, Epicurus and the Stoics. That's the fathers of the nonsense you hear written in books about the psyche. Which you look up psyche it means the soul. How can a man tell you about a soul and he not a saint? <laughs> That's impossible y'all. But he can give you a lot of dope to suck up on. Yeah he can do that. Penny pills. He'll be driving uh, cars you didn't even know existed. He'll be driving in with your money. Yeah, he'll be driving to, with, with doors that open up on the back, engine in the front. He'll be driving with your money while he dope you up with a bunch of foolishness. Areopagus, what does this word mean? G697, G697, the name of the Greek deity of war. Did y'all hear that? See, this is their God of war, but guess who our God of war is? Sabor. When you see that in chain, that means the God of war. That's God the Father. Mm -hmm. He says, I hear you kept money back from your employees. They've been calling on me, the Lord of Sabor, the Lord of war. He said, they didn't call me. I got to come whoop you now because I'm the Lord of war. They're not my children, but I can't let you dog them out because I made all y'all. So this is their God of war. Isn't that sad? He doesn't even exist. And a derivative of G47, Rock of Ares. Oh my goodness. A place in Athens. Areopagus, Mars here. It's a flat rock. It still exists today. Flat rock up around the mountains of Greece. And that was like the Supreme Court to hear all kind of stories. So they say, take him to them. This babbler. I bet he won't run that nonsense by them. Now watch what he going to do when they take him to the Supreme Court. For thou bringest certain strange things out here. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. Some people just love new stuff. They, that's why the news makes so much money. They love new stuff. So what's new? They have, I used to deliver newspapers part-time job, I would have the elderly come out in the rain. And I wouldn't even got the car rolled when I and pitch it through the window. And they'd come out and wave with roll bone in the rain and an umbrella and cold five in the morning. I want to see what's new. I wonder if they went to church like that in the rain, five in the morning. Mm -hmm. See, that's what you see. They're all going to remember getting that newspaper. I got it. But I don't need to go to church. Baby, all the church is the same. All right. Let's see you walk to the throne of grace boldly with that nonsense in your mouth. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Now, nah, he's on Mars Hill. There it is. You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. You're too religious. See, her brother Fred talked about something about Solomon. Solomon said, Don't be over, overly righteous now. I'm trying to outdo Jesus. I'm trying to outdo God. Overly righteous. You know, I bow nine times on Thursday. You don't be overly righteous, man. You know, I'm going to be overly righteous. Just be righteous. That's good enough. If you can do that, you've done a, mir a miraculous thing. For I passed by and beheld your devotion. I found an altar with this inscription. Now, I'm not saying you can't bow in multiple times, but don't try to act like you've created some new righteous way. That's what we say. I'm making you greater than others. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. You know why it's capitalized? Because it means something. It means the first God. 
That's Jehovah. They don't know him no more, but they know he exists. We don't know what he looked like, but we got to give him some love too. Let's give him some love. How about some love for the Most High? Huh? Can we give some love, Greece? You know, see, that's like a shout out to God. God don't want no shout when you get yourself killed. So instead of killing them, he sends the teacher, Paul. Whom therefore you ignorant words, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, doing it not and temples made with hand. Now here come those who like to use instruments. This is why you can't. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything. Seeing, he gave it to all life and breath and all things. Somebody say, man, I left the club. I'm going to play my trumpet to Jesus now in church. No, you're not. <laughs> no, no, no. See, because you are some man made that trumpet. And now you're telling God, till I brought my trumpet, you couldn't get this love. So the Lord said, yeah, that was David and them. Not you. No, no. Just give me your voice because I made that. I don't want nothing that you brought in. He helped Moses understand that. Take his shoes off. Because you, you may yell somebody like you. I need you to come on with the feet I gave you. That's what the Lord is saying. Don't bring that to me. He says. And have made of one blood all nations of men. For to dwell on all the face of the earth. And have determined the times before appointed. And the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord. If happy they might feel after him. And find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. See he determines where you went. How far you went. Why? Because I got to send men to get you. I can't let you be in Hawaii in the first century. That's too far. The Mormons are lying. That was nobody in America. Do you know every nation that's named in Acts chapter 1? You can find their habitation and the map where they live. Ancient maps showing Pamphylia was here. And not America. Well no one in South America. No one in St. Croix. No one in Japan, no, nobody, until they migrated there hundreds of years later. Because we know the name of the nation. And the nation told you where they were, and everybody knew it. That's how Rome ruled the world. Rome knew where Pamphylia, I know where y'all at. And, you run, and we run you. If we want something, you better give it up. We'll send an army there with that gold eagle and whoop you silly and take it from you. So no, I don't buy that no more. That's a lie. Why would the mamas out? Because I'm not a Christian. That's why. How did I get started? Some men saw golden plates. Oh, that's all right. You know, that's all right. Thank you for telling us. Now we know where you're from. You didn't come from Jesus. See this, and see this is why the Church of Christ is a light to the world. We're well, light, and there's nothing you can do to trick us. You can't fight us. You can't teach against us because we're the people the kingdom's left to, not other people. You can be a part of it if you get baptized. But once you're in, you still got to walk right. He says, For in him we live and move and have our very being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. They even wrote poems about the Most High God. Say he don't need nothing for us. But we're going to throw some names out there. Some other folks involved. Chronos, Zeus, Apollos. We like to mix it up a little bit. But they know, okay, the true God, he don't need nothing. They say, your poets told you this. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we are not to think that God is like to the gold or silver or stone graven art by man's device and the times of this ignorance God winked at but now commanded all men everywhere to repent I'm going to show you how powerful this gospel is and we're done with this portion of the message because he had appointed a day in which he would judge the world and write it by your uncle no by your grandpa by papa no by the man whom he ordained whereof he had given assurance which one would that be unto all men and that he raised him from the dead listen if God thought you had to see Jesus in this time frame walk on the earth. He'd have put you back there. You don't need to see him. If you don't believe now, it's because you wouldn't have believed then. He's not just, he's just not a believer. He's just not a believer. You've got to accept that. And eat, have a good meal, drink, and be merry because tomorrow you die. And not literally. Paul says that's going to be it for you. That's all we can do. He says, verse 32, and when they heard 
of the resurrection of the dead, what did they do? Praise God, no. Some mock. And others said, who are here, the, again, that's on this map. Some mock, oh, they talk about resurrection of the dead. Man, don't know about resurrection from the dead. They left. But another group said, well, hold on, let's get some more. Can, can you come back and talk to us again? That's how I'm not studying. So Paul departed from among them. How bid certain men claim unto him and believe among the which was Dionysius, the Areopagite. Oh my goodness. Paul went on Mars Hill and guess what he did. Now you're going to love this. Guess what Paul the gospel preacher did when he went to Mars Hill to the beautiful supreme court. What did he do? He baptized one of their own G698 Areopagite. A member of the court held on Mars Hill. He baptized one of those nine. Well, we would say Supreme Court Justice. At the airport. Hey man, can you baptize me? The judge, you got one of the nine? We got nine of them. You got one of them? So what would you do when you went to the Supreme Court? Just read what I just read. Hey, they baptized a guy like you. You read it? I mean, I'm about you. Oh, that'd be so embarrassing. The Lord said, you're ashamed of me? And this adulterous? And some of them, right? This, this nation is full of people that don't even know and comprehend the simplest form of life, sexuality. And sinners, in addition to sexuality, and you ashamed of me, Jesus said, I will tell you, I don't even know you, man. Where you from? This nation is so vile. You got a dude sitting by a world class gymnast. On commercials and all over the boards, billboards of Houston, with a beard as thick as the one my brother used to wear, with shorts on in a pose like her. And he wants to be a lady. You'll see, it. it'll be two back to back, and the gymnast, the young lady who won, young African lady, and he's holding her something, and she holding her something. He wants to be a lady like her. So that I say, that's a dungeon rate. And you and you are saying you should be ashamed of him. Billy Porter wearing a dress on TV, two of them are taking pictures. He overshowed the women. But he's a dude. And Jesus said, You're gonna be ashamed of me. You got people breaking in a Senate and tearing up stuff, and Jesus saying, and you ashamed of me. Man, just to sometimes I, I lay, sometimes I'm just in the house, and I just burst out laughing. Someone come across my mind, and I saw, and I just had to wipe my eyes and say, Lord, this world is terrible. It's so funny. And I'm going to let you tell me to be afraid of a disease when it's time to go to church? Man, you got to go sell that lie to somebody else. It would be an embarrassment to the Lord after all I know to listen to some nonsense like that. That was the biggest joke of 2020. Don't go to church. Nevertheless, he baptizes one of them. And a woman named Demarius and others with them. Do you see this small little group? And if we know Paul like Paul, he was glory, hallelujah, man. We got we got we got one of them. And we got that lady. And y'all remember we got the mother folks. And the Bible says all of heaven is rejoicing. That's the lesson. If you hear not in the church, you need to get baptized. You're not going to make it into heaven. You're not making it into heaven. You've already been baptized. Acts 19, 1 through 5. It's clear. Your teacher was not from God because they worship just like these Athenians in Acts 17 with those instruments. Not from God. In addition to that, if you were dipped in water, the message was from God because the message says, you know, you already saved before baptism. This is outside of okay, You're not saved. And it doesn't matter who baptized you. It's nothing personal. It's just factual. You need to get baptized because you won't make it. And see what happens now. You know why it's so comfortable for Abraham to talk to Elijah? He calls him son. Just like a wonderful son. When you weren't hurt, you had good things. Abraham points it out. Now Elijah's had bad stuff. Bad body issues, stuff went wrong. It's cool though. We don't want to go there anyway. And if we did, it's a God. So he let no, we don't want no nobody ever go away. Y'all that. And anyway, if they thought that, it's a God came across. No, no, we don't want to go help you now. 
the desires that you suffer because you sin and you blaspheme. You know what the saints say in Revelation? Every now and then they say unto the Lord, Lord, when will you avenge our blood on the people that put us here? Go get them, God. Go get them. Don't save them. Get them. See, that's a different mentality on that side. My brother Fritz taught that different mentality over there. Because they know, man, they, 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 they have some crooks. See, they got the full global picture, spiritual world now. It's just beautiful. Go kill them, God. Go kill them. See, here on this side, we're trying to rescue. Once you get over there, it's like, when they going to get them? Isn't that amazing? Because they're criminals. They are spiritual criminals that teach for us that. Let's show a guy on TV his hair sticking all up. Look like somebody been whooping on him because the police had to wrestle with it. His picture he looked like he high. Found cocaine. They said he's arrested. He beat his wife. He raped his cousin. All kinds of, they got him on there. He's a criminal. And everybody, whoo, he's a bad character. But spiritual criminals, they're applauded. Amen. Amen. Isn't that amazing? It's said when you get to the judgment. So Paul said, take the same gospel, because I talk to the fathers of it and help them. Same gospel. They don't hear it, shake the dust, not coming back and move forward. So, you got to be baptized again. Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 2, I'll show a ditch baptisms again. Why? Because Jesus said our died, was buried, third day, rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He's very clear. He that believes that and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not that shall be down. Mark 16, 16. Peter preaches. They ask him. Just, it's just a conversation. It's a conversation at a gospel meeting. At a worship unto God. A glory to God on Pentecost. It's Pentecost Sunday. And they asked, what shall we do in verse 37? He says, change and be baptized. Acts 2.30. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. To get his character and authority. For the remission of sins. And receive and get the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and unto your children. To all that are far. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Him. In other words, did he testify and encourage them? Saying, save yourself from this unto all. That word means your whole generation is perverted. Then they that glad to receive his word baptized, same thing. About 3,000 souls were added unto them. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the breaking of bread, prayers, and one of my favorites, the fellowship. To walk in the light as Christ is in the light. Acts chapter number 2 and verse 42 talks about it. But 1 John chapter 1 explains the fellowship. It's when you walk in the light as Christ in the light. For the saints are not walking in the light as Christ in the light. You don't even have fellowship with us. You're just here. Whatever building you're in, you're just here. In physical, but not spiritual. So it says in Acts 2, 47, And the Lord added to the church daily, such should be saved. In Acts chapter 8, the unit wants to get baptized. It's just a conversation. After a gospel Bible class. See, here's why with an enemy. Philip knows the answer. If you believe it on your heart, you may. So we learn after hearing, believing, repenting, you've got to confess. Confess what? I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Start the charity baptizing. He's safe. Why is it so technical? First, we must understand 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit, that's the Holy Ghost. John chapter 16, verse 13. Are we all baptized into one body? That's the church. Colossians 1 18. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, Bond the free. That's a different types of people. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. It says, 1 Peter 3, 21. The life figure wants that even baptism is also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who's going in heaven. Angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. And he warns, Revelation 2, 10. But the devil should cast some of you into prison. Got a tribulation 10 days. We know it's not literal. The apostles were way past 10 days and suffering. He says, but be faithful of death. You have everlasting life. You know it's easy to talk about it, but when we leave here, when we leave out of here, the devil going to make sure he bring it to you. Because he knows one of the demons got to get you. And just expect the trauma, but let it go. Because you can't talk about it and walk contrary to it. 
you got to look at it and say, that's not for me. I'm fixing to go the other way. It's sometimes you see sin, you should go, man, let me go this way. I just don't even want to go near in that area. Just have to move. Remember. You think he's going to let you get all this and not come for you? If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you're just a sitting duck. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Poo, poo, y'all just pull the trick. I'm going to hit it because they, they can't go nowhere. And that's what we are. Fish in a barrel. But with God, we're protected. So you can get baptized. Now, if it doesn't mess it's such a triangle, we'll be able to communicate to you and give you more information and direct you to how to get baptized. But if you're here, stay standing when we sit down. Remember, don't wait on nobody else to get baptized because you can't help them until you get baptized. But if you're here, you're a member of the church, you've gotten off track. You can ask prayer. Right now, while together, we stand and sing heaven's invitation. The and tenderly Jesus is calling. Calling for you Thank you. and for me. See on the portal, he's waiting and I watch. Watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling.